In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to a job call system. First question, a source document to report how much time was spent working on a job. Either A, payroll register, B, W2, C, general ledger, D, time ticket, or E, wages payable. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. A source document to report how much time was spent working on a job. A. Payroll register. Now that might sound familiar if we're dealing with payroll, so I'll keep that for now. Uh, B says uh, W-2, and that probably sounds familiar, but that's going to re report the wages, not for a job, but for all um, you know, an individual's employees, wages and withholdings and whatnot. So it's not B. C says the general ledger and uh, the general ledger. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Ledger is gonna, gonna give us detail, but it, it's, there's a general ledger account for any, any type of account. It's gonna give us detail by date. So it's not really giving us the type of detail we're looking for uh, by job. So it's not the GL. And then uh, D says the time ticket, and that might be the, a source doc. It sounds like a source document, so I'll keep that for now. And by the way, uh, B isn't really a source document, it's a reporting document as well. So the source document w would be the, you know, the source of us entering the data into the system, whereas this is more of like the, the result of the data being, being processed in, into this form. Uh, and then and this might be a source document for the tax returns for the employee, by the way, but for the making it from the company, it's it's not a source document. It's, it's what's the result of the data is being reported. And then E says wages payable. And that doesn't seem right. That's part of a journal entry. It doesn't seem like a, that's a source document. So let's go through this again. Uh, we're left with A and D. A source document to report how much time was spent working on a job is either the payroll register or a time ticket. Now the payroll register is where we're going to track basically all the time for all employees. It's not really the source document. It's where we might we might use it, you know, from the source document, which is the time ticket. The time ticket is going to have to tell us which job people have worked on, so we know to apply uh, that time and the cost of the labor to the specific job. So final answer: source document to report how much time was spent working on a job is D time ticket next question direct labor cost example a supervisor salary b ceo salary c janitor wages d assembler wages e sales commission let's go through this again using the process of elimination direct labor cost example now, if we think about these, we have we have a, a list of folks here that we're going to be paying. We're looking for the direct labor. Those are the, that's going to be the type of labor that we can apply directly to a specific job. So which of these is going to be things that we can apply to the job, apply to the job sheet and therefore put their labor directly into the work and process supported by the job sheet? Either A, supervisor salary. Uh, I'll keep that for now. B, the CEO salary. A CEO is probably not in the warehouse, so probably probably not working on specific jobs too often. So we're gonna say that's not it. And then C says the janitor's wages. Uh, again, the janitor might be in the in the uh, the factory, but we don't know which job. You know, they're just cleaning up the factory, which which is beneficial to the entire or doing. You know, that's beneficial to the entire process of making inventory. So we will apply it to uh, the inventory, but it's gonna have to go to overhead and then be applied out and then the assembler wages and 
Yeah, there, you can't really get much more direct than that, right? They're the person putting, I mean, if we're making guitars, they're the ones making the guitars. So that you would think that one has to be the one because they're making the guitar it's as direct as you can be. And then, and then E says sales commission. And this one, you, you might think, well, that seems kind of direct too, because they're selling, that's the cost of selling a particular job, which is true, but it's not part of production. It's not going to go on the cost side of thing. That's, that's part of the sales side of things. It's not going to go on the job cost sheet because the sales commission has nothing to do with the cost of the inventory. It's a period cost. It's a sales cost. So it's not going to be that. So between A and D, direct labor cost example, either, supervi either supervisor salary or the assembler wages. Now, typically the supervisor kind of walks around and supervises every all the jobs, right? So you can imagine them looking into all the jobs and making sure everything's processing properly. Um, and, and so again, we don't know exactly which job they're working on, or at least not as specifically as we certainly would with the assembler. Typically we would know who's assembling what, if it's a job cost system and we have this differentiation of products. So, and again, re remember it's a process we're, when we're talking about a job cost system, it's not like they're, the assembler is just putting together one part in an assembly line that it, because they're custom products. So we would know we would be taking time to put together a custom product. They'd have to tell us which product we're working on because they are custom in a job cost system. So final answer, direct labor cost example, D, assembler wages. Next question, the rate established prior to the beginning of a period that is used to assign overhead cost to jobs is the A, predetermined overhead rate, B, overhead allocation rate, C, estimated direct labor rate, D, estimated direct material rate, or E, job overhead rate. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. The rate established prior to the beginning of a period that is used to assign overhead costs to jobs is the A. Predetermined overhead rate. That sounds familiar. I'll keep that for now. B says overhead allocation rate. That sounds less familiar, but kind of appropriate. You would think we're allocating overhead to the jobs, so I'll keep that for now. C says estimated direct labor rate. Um, now, that, the reason that might sound familiar is because we, we typically might use direct labor to help us determine what this rate is. So, but uh, it, it's really not an estimated direct labor rate. It's, we're estimating the overhead. So it's not C. D says estimated direct materials rate. And that might sound less familiar, but again, we could use materials to calculate what this rate will be because we're trying to use a ratio to see how big a job is. So it's not, but it's not D. And then E says job overhead rate. And again, that's what we're applying really. So you might think that sounds, you know, that sounds kind of reasonable. So let's go through this again using the, and see if we can narrow this down further. So the rate established prior to the beginning of a uh, period that is used to assign overhead costs to jobs is the either a predetermined overhead rate, B overhead allocation rate, or E job overhead rate. Now, again, they all sound like we're, you know, we're applying overhead here, but if you know, the one that should ring most true, that sounds familiar, it should be the predetermined overhead rate. So that's what the actual term is going to be. These sound like kind of plausible terms, overhead allocation rate sounds plausible, but that's not what they called it. You know, it's, we're, we are allocating the overhead. So you could call it that. I mean, and again, you could make an argument. That's what we're doing. That's what it's exactly what we're doing, but, but that's not like the term that, that we're going to use. So you're probably not going to pick up credit on that. And then the job overhead rate, again, that's kind of, kind of what it is description it, but it's, it's been named. They've labeled it the predetermined overhead rate. So final answer, the rate established prior to the beginning of a period that is used to assign overhead cost to jobs is the a predetermined overhead rate.